Aww, Aww, geek out. out! Bleep blop bloop gamers. It's another installment of the video game archives. I'm Sam. I'm Zach. This week, as promised, we're going to be talking about the uh, second original uh, Mario game, Super Mario game on the uh, on the Game Boy, Super Mario Land 2, Six Golden Coins. Honestly, I mean, I think this is the for for me this is the best Mario game on the uh, on the Game Boy. Perhaps dare I say the best handheld Mario game ever. I don't know. Would you go that far, Zach? Ooh, um, I don't know. 3DS has some pretty solid Mario titles. Actually, the DS too with a uh, new Super Mario Brothers. But uh, going, yeah, as far as uh, Game Boy installments, uh, I would say um, this is slightly better than Donkey Kong. Yeah, yeah. Um, would you put it over the original Super Mario Land? I I would because uh, this is. This is one of the patterns that we've been seeing when it comes to the first installment and the second installment, how it's just such a drastic difference, but it improves on it in almost every single way. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's like this one this one's top notch. This is this is primo. And I think a lot of it is because it uh incorporates a lot of there are no you know, vehicle stages really. Uh there's one stage where you're forced to side scroll left to right and there's a bunch of angry killer stars. That one kinda sucked. But, oh, yeah. um, you know, it's, it, it's, it's classic Mario. It's left to right Mario. You've got more power ups, um, including the bunny ears, which I don't think have ever shown up ever again. Yeah, I would say, um, the bunny ears kind of got replaced with the, uh, Tanuki suit in the 3d Mario games. How it's just, Hey, you can float longer. Actually, same thing with the Super Mario galaxy with the B suit, same concept. You just, you glide. Um, and then for some reason, uh, flapping your ears does the trick for that. Yeah. And, you know, this was developed at the same time as Super Mario World. And apparently, you know, the developers for Super Mario Land 2 kind of took a lot of influence from, from watching that. This game came out in 92. Um, this was, you know, uh, this for me was a game probably second only to Link's Awakening as my favorite game, period, on the original Game Boy. Uh, again, it's my favorite Super Mario game. But I think you and I are dancing around... Probably this game's no, easily, I think, this game's single most contribution to uh, the Nintendo legacy at large, which is to say Super Mario Land 2 is where Wario shows up for the first time. Yes, his greedy, evil brother is the main antagonist of this game, which, again, is which is mind-blowing at the time. Yeah. I, is it the instruction book that straight up is like, yo, Wario is Mario's brother, but we're never going to mention that factoid ever again? It's it's funny. It's uh, you had a, it's one of those things where you had to go down a rabbit hole to really get the lore. How how did how did you how did you come across it? Well, I remember it in the uh, Super Mario Adventures comic in Nintendo Power. Basically, um, Mario and Wario played cowboys, and then Mario was just bullying him, which turned him evil, <laughs> which I found to be very amusing. There's some times where, like, Mario is... It, I, rem- I think it's in uh, Super Mario Strikers on the uh, GameCube, where if Luigi Luigi's team wins... The award ceremony is Mario standing on, like, intentionally standing and scuffing Luigi's boots. Sometimes Mario can be a bit of a dick. And he gets away with it, too. Yeah, of course. He's just like, oh, well, you're not going to see Luigi's Mansion 2 for, like, 10 years, so bye. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Also, Mario has a castle because apparently he's that well off. That's right. He does start off uh, with a castle. Um I just yeah, thought, it's, uh, I thought he was just a, a a Brooklyn plumber, but apparently he's got his own like he literally has his own mini fiefdom, his own mini kingdom, with his own emblem straight out the front. Yeah, and there's like of all the different lands, there's like Tree Land and Star Land and Turtle Land, which is instead of just calling it like Undersea Land, they're just like it's Turtle Land. But there's straight up an House Land, which is just everything's big. There's uh, but termite infested. There's Mario Land. Like there's a straight up he has like a poly pocket, a giant poly pocket head of himself tucked away in his kingdom <laughs> that is apparently yeah. taken over by the three little pigs. I have to say I am really impressed with the concepts of these 
uh, lands worlds, if you will, because you don't really get any of that in later installments. They always do the pigeonhole, uh, desert world, ice world, water world, jungle world. But here it's just like, like you mentioned, with the giant toy of Mario, where it's just like, hey, the boot slides open and that's a stage. And then you get to the hat and then that's where the boss is located. It's very cool. You have a turtle that eats Mario. You uh, go into a bubble and shoot yourself up to the moon. Um, these lands are also very interactive in the way that you enter them. Yeah, yeah, I th that was something... It's the first handheld Mario with an overworld map, which it kind of takes cues from Super Mario World and Super Mario Brothers 3. But yeah, the idea that you could not only navigate the kingdom, but like how you enter these like little sub-worlds within Super Mario Land is just... Yeah, it, it was a... I mean, this game, for me, improves on Super Mar the original Super Mario Land in every single way. Um just gameplay wise. The only thing it doesn't bring back is like submarine Mario or, or fighter jet Mario, but that's, or spaceship Mario, but that's fine mm -hmm. because those always stuck out as kind of like more points of curiosity than like legitimately like I'm looking forward to Mario in a fucking submarine. <laughs> yeah. It's very impressive how much they crammed into this tiny, tiny game. Yeah, it really does kind of, cause this predates, I mean, the Game Boy Color isn't even out at this point, you know. Game Boy Color doesn't come out for like another like three or four years. Um, this really pushes that original big brick Game Boy as far as it can go. What would you say is like your favorite? Is your favorite world of all the different Mario? You know, the little different kingdoms or whatever within Mario Mario Land Two. Whew, that's tough. Um, it, it's funny because there's. There's one thing that I like about uh, each world, but I would say overall, um, I found these stages to be especially tough too. It's um, the oh my gosh, this uh, this is really tearing me up. Okay, so I have to say like my least favorite is probably um, forgetting the name at the moment, but it's like the Witchland, the uh, Haunted House, Spooky Black oh, Holder, and one Pumpkin Land. Pumpkin Land. Okay, duh. It was like every Halloween thing I could associate except for the obvious. Anyways, but yeah, that one I would say is probably far the worst because of just how annoyingly challenging it is. Mm -hmm. How you have, you know, lids that shoot up and down. And then uh, even with the boss, I just could not time the jumps for the life of me. And so as far as the favorite goes, I would go back to like the Mario Land, Toy Land. Uh, but just because I thought the concept was so cool. And I knew never thought I would be fighting the three little pigs as a boss. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in in the Mario Land, no less. Which is kind of weird again, just like the idea. One, that Mario has this his own head-shaped land, and then the boss are the three little pigs. It's I don't know what about that screams Mario, but it's there. It's there for some reason. Um, could you... Did you were you ever able to beat this game or was this one of those like Super Mario Land or Super Mario Brothers 2 or the lost levels that gave you trouble? Um let me see. I remember watching my oldest sister beat this and um I thought it was so cool when she was finally when she finally got to Wario and how each of the uh fights were different and then how he was also consuming the power-ups. I just that blew my mind. Mm -hmm. Um when I played this in my personal experience like being a kid and being a lot older uh, there were probably uh, one of three worlds that I could easily just breeze through. But then it wasn't until I was a lot older that I was finally able to get all six golden coins and then go to the castle. And I think like the castle, I was just like gave up halfway through and never went back to it. Uh, even when I downloaded it for the 3DS, it was just, oh, hey, fond memories. And then I it was just added to my backlog. Yeah, I admittedly, I can get pretty far into the castle but it's like it just gets you have to it's some of the hardest platforming in this you know certainly 2d platforming in this in this entire franchise um so yeah man <laughs> like it's um also is this the only game where wario is a magical being like has uh, spells well, in wario land 2 he cannot die so i don't know I mean, I, I consider that magical. But basically what happens in that game is that he gets all these different status ailments which allow him to, you know, uh, have access to new things. It, in, in a sense, it's kind of like Metroidvania, 
but it's um he interacts from like enemies and like things going on in the uh world so for instance he could be like zombie wario or he could be like muscle wario Mm -hmm. uh yeah that's weird yeah that's it's yeah it's crazy that he that that this dude can use the power up too i always thought because you never saw that with koopa or bowser or whatever and you never saw that with um wart (laughs) from super mario brothers 2 or the or the alien from sarasa land in the original super mario land so yeah this I, i always again there's just like this game is so like if you get an original like it, it's available on the on the 3DS eShop and everything but if it really is one of the highlights easily one of the top you know 5 games on on that original Game Boy and certainly I think it it stands to reason as potentially the greatest handheld Mario game of all time. Yeah, absolutely. A uh, one thing I want to give credit to is how amazing the chiptune music is uh when you're in outer space oh yeah yeah the kind of yeah they uh, the the sound quality it's just it, it never ceases to amaze me like how much better games even just a year or two later in the life cycle of a console are like just from a technical standpoint better than their predecessors because both visually and yeah audio everything is including the soundtrack and unlike uh though if i remember correctly like is the, i'm trying to think what the th- this game did have a killer soundtrack too this was just like i mean would you put it over the original super mario land soundtrack um i think so because they definitely they definitely went above and beyond and uh took advantage of all these uh, different worlds that again are just so different from everything else that you've seen uh, previously and also in the future. Um, oh my god, I love these um, like portraits that are associated with each world. Mm-hmm. You, you can actually like frame them as artwork. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's just the nostalgia in me. Oh yeah, I also hated Tree Zone. <laughs> Tree Zone's the one where you fight the bird at the end, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's one of the first ones that you play, but I just remember it being very annoying. <laughs> yeah, I you know, I think the um I'm trying to think what my favorite zone was. I remember having a lot of fun in Mario in Mario Zone and a lot of fun in Honestly, I know you, you weren't big on it, but I really liked Pumpkin Zone and I really liked I really liked House Zone. Wasn't big on Star Zone, which is weird cuz I'm usually about the space theme places. Um and yeah, like Turtle Zone and 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 Tree Zone weren't that weren't that great for me either. With Space Zone, uh, I enjoyed the low gravity physics. So there was a point where I could time it right and just like keep jumping off enemies and then just like ride them throughout the stage. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know that stage that I was talking about earlier, where you have to go from left to right and there's all the killer stars and you have to navigate through that. Mm-hmm. I would just float to the top of the screen and would only have to duck down when I needed to. Because if you kept jumping or using that low gravity jump. You could go all the way to the top, and I guess the designers weren't like, "Oh well, we have to keep building this up." It's like, no, you can you can get through almost the entire stage just riding that top. Invisible walls. Yeah, basically, it was like, it was it was just easy, <laughs> you know. Um, I'm trying to think what what was your favorite? Uh, what would you say was your favorite boss? Is it the three little pigs? Yeah, I mean, just because, okay, uh, it's a it's tough but fair as far as the challenge goes. And I just, it, it, it tickles me. Like, every time, like, when they pop up on the screen, it's just like, I can't believe I'm, like, fighting pigs that are bouncing around everywhere. Well, no. Uh, it's, yeah. it's, it's a fun challenge, and I enjoy it. I think the fun, the funniest thing for me about, about all that is not only are you fighting the three little pigs, they're each waiting for you in their houses, like the straw exactly. house, the wood house. Yeah, just like okay, cool. And then what I always hated about that boss fight is it got got so unrealistically, like just unreasonably fast by the end. So if I took out the third little pig, and didn't have like you know if I was like regular Mario or little Mario didn't have a power power up at that point, it would almost be luck. It'd almost be like okay, I just hit him. Um, yeah, or, or you're just uh, you're constantly on the defense. Yeah, it was it was. It, it that fight starts out fine, but by the end of it, I'm just like ready. It's it's so frustrating. 
Um, and that's a they really do. I don't know if that was a response to Super Mario Land being criticized for being too short and easy. Because I mean, there's 32 levels in Super Mario Land too, which mm-hmm. is you know a considerable uh, amount more than than its predecessor. And it is like you were kind of alluding to, noticeably harder than its predecessor as well. Definitely. But hey, we get Wario. <laughs> I think if I remember correctly, the instruction book says that he's Mario's childhood friend. It, I guess it isn't mm-hmm. yet until the unless you the Nintendo Power Comics where he's like a long lost brother. And then I guess, you know, it stands to reason here. Waluigi technically isn't Wario's brother, is he? Uh, you know, it's never really made clear. It's just um it was just, hey, let's give them counterparts and let's also um actually they were also gonna do a Wat Peach and a Wad Daisy, but that got scrapped. I think it got scrapped by so Miyamoto this, himself. This was around the Mario Tennis era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Miyamoto himself stepped in and was like, We don't need to see what they're dating. We don't need to see what Wario and and, and Waluigi are dating. Yeah. We we just want to see their baby counterparts, okay? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And they're rose gold counterparts, apparently. Yeah, right. <laughs> that was always the weirdest. Like, I, Metal Mario makes... I guess, yeah, you got Metal Mario, you might as well get rose gold peach. But I want to live in a world where we're so equal that we, yeah, we do get a Wa peach and a Wa daisy. I think I think that's one of my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I, I hope... Uh... I hope they make them more, like, I don't know, Cruella DeVille-esque if they're going to try to do, like, a an evil look. I could see them being, like, the step, the stepsisters from, like, the original yeah. Cinderella. Yeah, I could see that as well. Um, so, yeah. I'm um, going to jump in real quick. Sure. Um, one thing that is very interesting is the look for Fire Mario having the feather right on top of his head. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of... Uh... In almost like a quail man esque touch right there. Um no, it's fine. It's fine. It's it was always weird playing like the handheld Mario games. They always kinda got a pass. It's like, oh that's not how they do it on the home console. It's like, well, it's Game Boy. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Um but yeah, no, that was a uh, interesting design revision that only lasts in this game. Because I guess especially since you can't necessarily the color palette swap isn't as evident on on a Game Boy, right? Well, yeah, but I guess my thing here is that usually when Mario um, has a feather, it's associated with flight. Yeah. Um, you know, whether it's like a cape or he's given wings. In this case, it's just, like, hey, we're going to make it the fireball rather than, I want to put a flower on his head or, you know, bundle sticks and a flame on his head. <laughs> yeah, he's like a, he's a candle, he's candle jack. Yeah. Uh, um, well, what would you say are like some of your, you know, you were alluding to watching your sister, uh, you know, watching your sister play this game. What what are some of your your real big evergreen memories when you first think of Super Mario Land Two? Oh gosh, um, yeah. Some of my memories is just uh, I know that when I received the Game Boy, which was just a hand me down for my dad, uh, it I had this game with it as well, and at the, at this time everyone like even like circles of friends and then like friends of friends, we were all just like trading cartridges back and forth because we didn't care. We didn't really understand the like, value at the time. So I probably had, there were times where I had two copies of this game and I was just uh, taking them out of the plastic cases and playing it. And uh, I remember the, um, how interactive the file select screen was. And I'm pretty sure that I've erased any progress that anyone else has made on the game. It's just because I was like, oh, look, he transforms into this. I'm going to send him down the pipe now. Yeah. And not knowing that I erased a save file at the time. Yeah, they like, I was at Wario's castle. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Though to be fair, this is a pretty, I mean, not again, not as short as its predecessor. You can get through Super Mario Land 2 pretty quickly. You could do it within an hour. That is true. Um I mean, and that just depends on how much of a completionist you are. If you want to go for all the secrets, if you want to, you know, play some bonus levels, get more lives. That's right. Yeah, this is uh, they lean more into the into the secret element, which I'm glad because Mario, in some level, at least since Super Mario Brothers, is kind of built on secrets. 
Uh, another evergreen memory is so many times where I've lost the bonus levels and yet the music's just like, duh, 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 Yeah, so happy and you're just like, but I yeah. failed. I failed miserably. <laughs> I'm not bitter at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are you rubbing this in my face? Um, Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's a good time. It's, again, one of the best games on the original Game Boy. It's one of the best, uh, you know, I don't, it wouldn't be in my top five Mario games of all time. It might just edge into a top ten, but it would be like the nine or ten spot at most. Um, but no, having said that, that's more of speaking to the quality and breadth of Mario games. This is this one's really this one's, you know, it's fantastic. It's it's it's. Yeah, I'm, I highly recommend checking it out. Invest some time into it if you have access to it, and it still holds up. Absolutely, it's it doesn't get any better than than this in terms of handheld. Held, though I, for me, it's it, it's a toss up between this and the original New Super Mario Brothers, but it's it it is top notch. Any any final thoughts on Super Mario Land Two, Zach? Yeah, I mean this it's a quintessential Game Boy game. So if you ever want to take a trip down memory lane, or if you want to uh, discover the Game Boy for the first time. Absolutely, take this for a spin. Yeah, again, available. How do you you just have this on the original cartridge in the in the uh, 3ds eShop? That's correct. I guess that's those are the only official ways this game was released. So that makes sense. Yeah, uh, the Wii U has the Game Boy Advance Virtual Console, but none of the previous iterations. Yeah, so that, yeah, that doesn't count. But anyway, so all right. Well, this has been another installment of the Video Game Archives. I'm Sam. I'm Zach. Next time, we'll be covering my first console ever, the Super Nintendo. Get ready. Things are about to get... Well, I guess they've been super since, like, 1985, like five, but now they're about to get 16-bit. super Super, yeah, more super. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> or bye. <laughs> This has been another Geek Out production. If you enjoyed what you heard, hey, you know, we've got a special episode every Friday. Of course, there's the usual catching up show every Wednesday. And you get book club episodes just about every Tuesday these days. Thanks for listening.